Hi guys, how are you? How are you doing today? Hi teacher, fine, how are you? I'm good, thanks for asking. Okay guys, today we're going to continue working with uh, sequencing adverbs, but what I want you to do is to make a mix of those words, sequencing words as well, and you are about to tell me a story. I'm sorry, you were about to tell me a story when you were a child. Okay, and we said the first person was going to be Carlos. Okay, okay Carlos, sure. go ahead. Okay, I'm ready. Thank you. Okay, <laughs> to begin, I'd like to share a history about one of my closet uh, childhood friends, Ricardo. Uh, firstly, or initially, let me introduce to Ricardo. He was a white boy with freckles and blonde hair. He was a little taller than me. At the beginning, uh, when we were just seven years old, living in the neighborhood of Colonia Santa Teresa, situated near at the El Salvador University. After after while after a while, uh, I was accompanied by my mother, while Ricardo was in the co in the company of his grandfather, in front of our houses. Given that these parents reside in the United States, and uh, we greet each other uh, for the first time, that's how our friendship began. Secondly, as time marched on, our bond grew stronger. Around the age of 12, we fre frequent the local park. Furthermore, we practice a variety of sports like soccer, basketball, and baseball, along with the game popular during that era like uh, Ladron Librado or Arranca Cebolla. <laughs> Thirdly, uh, we continue to mature at the age of uh, 15. A cemetery near our neighborhood became a peculiar source of amusement. During this period, we acquired Old Clutch and we made the famous Ondias. With this hand, we embarked on lizard hunting adventures with brought us immersed joy. Afterward, we enjoyed a few days of Vikings and occasionally occasional bout of rebellion. Eventually or next, at the age of 17, as we near the culmination of our school years, Ricardo's Parents, as I had previous, previously mentioned, relocated him to the United States. Throughout his time in our hometown, he resided with his grandfather, grandparents. Lastly, since his departure, Ricardo has returned to El Salvador only once. Precisely two years ago, in and only had a little time to see each other and talk about our childhood adventures. Presently, our interactions are com confined to phone conversation as he resides in California. And finally, I recently I had changed to visit the United States. I was in Florida. Re regrettably, the vast geographic distance prevent me from making a journey to reunite with him. Nonetheless, I remain optimistic that in the not so distant future, we will have the opportunity to meet again and remain is about the cherished memories of our childhood. That's it, teacher. <laughs> Excellent, great job. I really like it.
<laughs> I like I liked the way that you were uh, mixing sequencing words and also subordinating words. That's awesome. Really Thank like you. it. Okay, okay, cool. Now let's listen to Vicente. You're next. Good evening, teacher. Sorry, Good I'm late. Evening. It's I right. got some problem with the Zoom. Okay. <clears throat> um, I don't know what what is the the um the activity for today. Sorry. Okay, Carlos. Are we, the, are we in the what the activity for today is? Okay. Uh, the history. The history, yes. Exactly. Uh, okay. when you were a child. Uh, yeah, I got it. Okay. Uh, can I read that, teacher? Uh, don't invent. Carlos was reading as well. <laughs> so, I, I listen. <laughs> Carlos, the, the way you were reading the information, that's the way you should speak. And if you speak like that, your English is going to sound native. Do you know okay. what I mean? Yes. Yeah. But you need to you need to try uh, to put those words in uh, in a conversation, and then mm -hmm. you are going to sound naturally, okay. and you are going to sound like an American because those are the types of vocabulary American people use, and okay. they try to sound like sophisticated, uh, highly educated, and if you speak the way you read, that's going to be amazing. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. But at least going... you, you have the ideas, right? Since you wrote the information down means that you had the ideas in your mind. What you need yeah. to do is just to deliver it verbally. All right. But this is okay. the, difficult. you know, it's uh, complicated because sometimes you are thinking in another uh, word and maybe you cannot mix uh, perfectly. Mm hmm that's right, yes. But la, like I said, if you put them in practice, that's going to become something natural in your in your vocabulary. And when you start talking, you are not going to think about what word am I going to use? Uh, what expressions should I use in this sentence? You are going to just sound uh, naturally. Like the way I'm talking, I'm I'm not reading anything. I'm just delivering the information because everything is in my mind since I've been practicing. So that's the way it should be, the language. Sometimes we try to translate everything we speak, all right, from one language to the second language. Yeah. Uh, it shouldn't be like that. It, it needs to be something automatically that comes from your brain, okay? okay. Put in practice. I know it's difficult sometimes uh due to different situations you don't concentrate on the specific vocabulary but if you uh try <laughs> to make an extra effort and put them in practice it's going to uh become better and better okay teacher all right i Thank will you. follow your, instru your, your instructions <laughs> yeah and you'll do better i i know so vicente go ahead please okay <clears throat> Okay, this history begin be, began when I was about 10 years old. <clears throat> at the beginning, we were living... At the beginning? In, at the beginning, we were living in, uh, in our own house in a place near to Suchitoto. <clears throat> and... We were uh, a happy family there. We didn't have water, electricity, and and, and something that we we need uh, daily, daily or is like your basic needs. Uh huh. Right. <clears throat> but we uh, uh, resold or, or sold anyway. Okay, and were you the oldest all, or the or the the youngest in the family? Youngest. I yeah. have two older brothers. Okay. Yeah, and first of all, when when the war began in nineteen eighty, ah. uh, the the guerrilla start to 
to recruit mm -hmm. uh, or recruitar, recruit uh -huh. uh, young young people. Okay. Recru recruit young people, and they want to recruit my older brothers, my two mm -hmm. older brothers. They are, they were looking for my brother anywhere. <clears throat> one day, um, one day at night, my father took a, de a decision and he says to all of we, uh, to all of us, all of us, mm -hmm. to all of us, um, very early tomorrow, we're going to leave this place because it's very dangerous to continue living here. Mm -hmm. The the situation that it was very terrible. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, uh, early next next day, when we woke up, we got ready very fast, and we start to. Started. To walk, started to walk to to leave the, the place where we were living. All the families uh, that were living in that place in the morning, very early, leave because the, the guerrilla people uh, began to looking for the for the young for people. Young people. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh, in the morning, very early yeah. too. And uh, <clears throat> and when we were uh, walking, we arrived to uh, another place that that calls uh, Colima. I don't know if you you know where is that place. In the same city, Sushitoto, or was that in, 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 in a different city? Different place. It's Colima is on Troncal del Norte the road. Mm, okay. Uh, yeah. And later that day we arrived in that place, and also in that place where uh, um sugar sugar mill or, or sugar factory, como ingenio de azúcar. Mm -hmm. but it doesn't work and we arrived there work. it didn't work and so it was not working uh-huh and we arrived in that place and we go inside the the went inside the, the factory and we were living in that place but uh we're very uh a lot of families living we were living between all the machines in inside the that place, and we were living for about uh, more than seven years in that situation. And, Hiding yourself from guerrillas. Yeah, right. Because in that place, where a uh, uh, position of uh, army members. Mm. And they uh, give us protection. Gave us. Mm -hmm. Gave us protection. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, furthermore, we were living between between the machines, and and I grew up in that place as well. Uh, about uh, uh, more than seven years, I I was there. And also, um, about when I was about twenty years old, I got a uh, my first job here in San Salvador. My here my first job was as a waiter. Mm -hmm. I Which was restaurant? working in. I was working in a hotel. Uh, it, mm -hmm. it is near to Metro Centro. Okay. Camino Real. Uh, the name was Camino Real. Right now is Intercontinental. Okay. I was I was working there, mm -hmm. and um, when the pass when the time passed, 
I got married. Um, I changed to other jobs. How many and children do you have? Right now I have one. He's, oh, just, just uh, he's, one. he's a boy. He's uh, 18 years old. 18 years old. No 18 daughters. years. No daughter. I have only one. Just one child. Yeah, and just yourself, one. Carlos, how many do you have? I have two teachers. Two. Girl yeah. and boy. Girl and boy, yes. Oh, awesome. Excellent. Awesome. Yeah. But they, they are very expensive. <laughs> <laughs> yes, a lot. <laughs> right, right now. Yeah, yes. right. <laughs> and and uh, right now, uh, um, I have a, another job. I don't work uh, um, as a waiter. I I am in the army right now. And, oh really? Yeah, uh, but I work in of in administration office, mm. <clears throat> but it's the same situation like the others people that are uh, green uniform. Okay. Yeah, and um, and finally, I I live. I got uh, I got my house. And I live in uh, Residencial La Gloria, mm -hmm. in Boulevard, Constitution Boulevard. Okay. Yeah. Good and for you. That's it. Yeah, it's good for me. <laughs> yeah. Um. That's let's it. see. Uh, yesterday. Uh ah, yesterday Carlos was talking the reason why he was. I mean, he decided to learn English and continue learning. And I, what's your purpose, Vicente? Since you work in an office, do you have like yeah. some customers or let's see some clients that speak the language or is something that you need to learn just to improve your knowledge? Um, as I tell, I told you yesterday, I was a study um, for about 10 months mm -hmm. in Centro Cultural. But mm -hmm. I didn't finish the course, so right now I want to finish, mm -hmm. get my um, diploma. Diploma. Uh -huh. But what's what's your main and purpose? Also, uh, to work um, as a personally, um, I don't know, uh, maybe in uh, guard. Yeah, or uh, or from house, maybe uh -huh. because in my job I can't do that because uh, nobody and nobody uh speak english there i can't also practice in that place i practice only with in class <laughs> okay and you're yeah. doing great actually all right yeah good yeah. thank you for sharing thank you. uh let's okay, listen to for... oscar uh, good night to everybody uh, I... good evening Good, Good evening. night when you are leaving the, the class. Good night. Oh. Good yeah, night. Thanks, thanks. Don't invent, Carlos. <laughs> Bien, thanks. Este, Go to bed. Um, I, was, uh, I was writing a, a little story. Um, um, I was born in San Francisco, Gotera. Uh, at the beginning, I lived in Barrio La Soledad, near, uh, near from Panadería Ana Vilma. My childhood was uh, very fine because we played with my friends. At seven years old, I studied uh, in Escuela Unificada. Uh, in 1992, we went to live uh, to Colonia Los Almendros. 1992. Then, uh, 1992. Uh, see, 1992. Yeah, well, thanks. We went to live to Colonia Los Almendros. Then the then the basic education. I studied high school in El Ingo, uh, the National Institute Institute, or from Gotera. I have been graduated me on general bachelor in 1998. 1998. After that, 90, 19? 19. Thanks. 1998. Thanks, thanks. Uh, after of that, I began to study in National University in 
2001. Uh, I work in Tropico Inn Hotel. Um, hotel. I continue. Hotel. Hotel. Well, thanks. Uh, I work in Tropico Inn Hotel, and I continue studying in the university at the same time. University. Uh, university. 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 At the set. At the same time. At the same time. Um, I graduated me in 2002 um, um, in in 2003 my first uh, job was in in Gotera City uh, secondly I was work um, in <laughs> Canton Azacualpa um, in in San Fernando, uh, the Mora, Morazan department, and then uh, I was to uh, to work in Cantón Las Cañas, uh, Santa working. Rosa de Lima. Santa Rosa de Lima. Uh, actually, I I work in. Uh, Santa Bárbara, Cantón San Marcos, in San Carlos, Morazán. Okay. Is well, that it? Thanks. thanks. Okay. Thank you. Uh, let's listen to Saray Trejos. A story when you were a child. Using sequence adverb, sequence words. You can also use subordinated conjunctions as Carlos did. Okay. It's up to you. Mm, okay. And so when I was a child, um, I was born in 2003, in April, and I started to study in Museo Cristiano. And in this place, I meet my actually best friend. I met. I met, sorry. I met when I was in the kindergarten. And Turn your camera on, please. Is wait for me. Mm -hmm. Now? Yeah, now we can hear. We can see you. Okay. So and we still be friends. So we have fifteen years of friendship, I guess. Mm -hmm. And we and we continue to stay together as a friend. Uh, we almost complete our whole education together. And however, um, when we were starting the high school, we separate, we study in different uh, institutions. Um, I study the high school in a bilingual high school, actually. Um, in the high school, we have a uh, uh, official practices and I did in a government institution of El Salvador and then I study well I started to study the college I was a student in relationships international relationships sorry uh, however I need to put in pause my studies because I need to start work and to fail the students by myself and I was working in a office uh, as a auditory. And what's as a what? I'm sorry. Auditory. Ah. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm. I'm sorry. And I really learned a lot. However, that job is really hard because you saw a lot of the economy of the company because it was a private company. So uh, I'm still here and I'm trying to learn more English to then uh, try to work in a full center and be my studies. So I hope to return and complete my studies. Have you ever tried to apply in a call center? Um, yes. But where, the, where, where do you apply? Teleperformance. And what did they say? My um, English was not good, and I am not fluent at speaking. 
Mm, okay. All right. I would say the contrary. It's something uh, that you need just to uh, improve, improve a little bit your fluency. And that will be it. Be more like open to expressions. Mm -hmm. If they ask you something, if you would like to uh, get an interview, something that they focus on is on the way you extend the information. So if they mm -hmm. ask you a question, don't close your mind on yes or no. Just deliver the information. Um, sometimes they ask you like, just when, when I... When I used to be in those places, they asked me just two questions and that mm -hmm. was it. <laughs> two questions and that was my my test. So it, de it depends on the way you answer the questions. Because if you say just, uh, for example, if they ask you, what's the most difficult uh, situation that you have faced? And you say, oh, the most difficult situation was when my mother died. And then you stop saying uh, the information. If if they, I mean, if you stop, they are, they are going to continue asking you questions and questions. And instead of ask, asking you two questions, they will ask you around 20 questions. So when I was in those places applying, they used to ask me two or three questions and that was it. Sometimes uh, there were some uh, colleagues who got less, mm -hmm. like surprised and they said, oh, just two questions? Do you pass the test? What did they say? Oh, they said that I, that I was hired, you know? Because that's the way, it's not what you say, it's the way you say it. Just mm -hmm. give me two seconds. The battery was coming down, okay. So uh, if you practice your fluency, they are going to ask you just two or three questions and then, and then you will get the job. But it's just a matter of practicing and that will be it. Okay, thank you for your thoughts. All right, uh, Edgar. Hello, good evening everybody. Good evening. Hello. I'm not writing nothing about myself, mm -hmm. but I'm gonna try to explain a little bit my history. Mm -hmm. Well, I was born in Chachapa Santa Ana, and where I finished my high school there. And well, I will not talk to you about my childhood. That it was so good because I enjoyed live there with my friends. I have a best friend. I had a best friend that his name is Mario. Okay. And well, with him, enjoy a different play a game. We uh, play in the morning and then in the weekend. And after that, we continue playing after the launch. We continue playing with him. But one day, after to play football in the morning, uh, our grandparents uh, called us to go to our lunch. And well, after to finish the lunch, after we after finish the launch we continue playing but i don't remember exactly what was playing because it was like a hide and seek mm -hmm. because i remember that i hide uh, close to the wall of the house and my friend my cousin because it's my cousin and was hiding in the other side of the house. And well, I don't know, all of a sudden I uh, uh, I don't know how to say, but close to the my head and to the wall of the house, 
and when I come to uh, my friend, pick up a little piece of uh, iron and throw through the piece of iron, and at the same time that I I como diría acerqué I got close I got close my head and he hit me with a piece of iron in my head and the moment I touch my head and uh, I watch my head huh? you were bleeding yeah my hand full of blow and after that I went to my home because we live near and I ran away to my home and told me that my mother I don't remember what she said but I remember that uh, he was uh, uh, he was regañar how would you say uh, call my attention called me uh, he my grandparents called his attention for that success that we happened but uh, it was not problem because after that we continue uh, being friends um after that when when we became to younger or teenager teenager mm -hmm. teenager yeah. we uh, separate because he uh, uh, went to live in another place and uh, in my case i live i uh, i come here to san salvador to live because we were living in the countryside and well uh, at the moment uh, i so uh, i don't have a contact or with him uh, just for message but no uh, in face to face in a personal uh, situation but we continue having a, a a good relation with my friend and now he is a, a he works in a army and in my case I work in a factory those uh, completely different works but jobs jobs exactly mm -hmm. and just that teacher I, okay. I and I know that don't follow the rules that frequency address it's okay it's in my story actually this the the story you were you were telling us is understandable and that's the main purpose mm -hmm. however yeah as you said the main idea was to use the sequence adverbs but anyways what you said made sense and it was understandable as well it, okay. talking about jokes or yeah those those types of situations are kind of difficult i i mean that was my 50 percent friend um, i remember that guy uh we used to be friends we used to fight when we were kids and uh when we got when we got uh, teenagers when we became teenagers um he decided to follow different lifestyle he has started drinking a lot of alcohol and meeting uh, different kinds of people. And he used to be a joker, actually. That's the reason why I decided to get away from him because he made a lot of jokes, uh, no funny jokes. I mean, it was not funny for me. And he didn't, uh, he didn't behave, actually, most of the time when he was drunk. And near to my neighborhood, there is a big hole around 200 meters deep and 
one day that was on weekend Saturday night he was joking about killing himself in that I mean throwing himself in that hole and suddenly he slipped and he went down to that hole big hole 200 meters deep and he opened his head in two parts like this yeah suddenly he died and it was, was like yeah that was so terrible he left two beautiful children and uh, the situation changed completely in his family yeah but he was a joker he seen he he was a little kid i used to get mad with him because of, of his jokes and that's the reason why i decided to be a apart far away from him i was i didn't like the way he was behaving but at the end you know that situation for me was not surprising because i knew him but it was something i i i wouldn't say silly but that joke uh cost his life and the entire entire family as well because uh, there were a lot of situations with his wife. And at the end, um, I mean, their, his family member are not going through a good situation. They don't have a good relationship right now. Because he was like, like the one who was making or keeping a balance between uh, his father and mother-in-law and his, his parents. But now they are fighting about landscapes or piece of lands, material things. Yeah. Anyways, those situations happen. Let me listen to Maria Jose. Good evening. I, I, wrote, I wrote a little history. In the beginning of years 2005, when I was a... Uh, child, I was uh, studying fifth grade in a Catholic school. There are always the typical scare legends. At first, we didn't uh, believe in that until it, until it happened, 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 I don't know, happened. To us, the first time a friend and I, um, the first time a friend and I were scared, we were cleaning the classroom. They know they knocked on the door, and the next day knocked. we were mm -hmm. knocked. Sorry, and the next day we went up to the third floor floor because, um, how do you say traviesas? I forgot that word. What would you like to say? Eh, bueno, de traviesas, de tremenda, mm. Be, eh, okay. Misbehaving. So eh. you were misbehaving girls. Okay. And, and we hear footsteps that were coming towards, towards us. After a little while, we heard same again, but this time closer. We ran as fast as fast as we could, we and could. Uh, we could. And while we were running, my friend's roller back caught me, and I felt scraping my knee. Um, the next day, Anon is called it's called us because one of the ladies who cleaning clean the school told her that it was forbidden to go up. Um, finally, they called my parents because of what happened the day before. And uh, leaving, leaving us grounded during, during recess. During breaks, okay. All right, thank you. Luis. You're next, Luis Ernesto.
Luis Ernesto, can you hear? Yes, teacher, but okay. I can. I can. Uh, only I will be listening today, teacher. Excuse me. Okay, so are you busy or something? Okay, let's listen to Giovanni. Giovanni? Evelyn there. Yes, ahead, teacher. Evelyn. Sorry, you were okay. eating. No problem. Okay. okay. Uh, when I was a child, um, well, well uh, to, to start, uh, today I have insured in my, in my lashes. Mm -hmm. How do you say seha? Eyebrows, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. Okay, in my in my in my eyebrow, because uh, when I was a child, I remember that I was I was playing soccer soccer with my with my friend, and suddenly I remember uh, that I was I was I was running uh, running with the with the balloon, and when when I was a child, I I was a I was a a little I was a little and uh, it's side to the how do you say pared or muro wall wall mm -hmm. okay it's side to the wall and because with because i was so excited i i don't saw the the the, 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 the power and I when i I, ah, I didn't i didn't see i didn't see the 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 bow and when I when I got out my face, I I I trash I trash my my hair with with the with the palm. And after that, I remember that my teacher called to my mom and my mom, uh, my mom, my mom can't come to the kindergarten, and hey. I remember. Hey. Huh? came okay came to the kindergarten and remember that my mother excellent me, Carlos <laughs> <laughs> I remember that my that my mother told me what happened and, and I, I remember that I say I don't know I I was I was running with the bottom and suddenly I trashed with the bow and um in the end my mother me llevó how do you say me llevo? Brought me. Brought me. Okay. My mother brought me to the cleaning and the cleaner, the doctor, uh, pulled, uh -huh, pulled me uh, some punch in my, in my, in my eyebrow. And after that, I, I returned with my mom to my hand. And I remember that my mom uh, bought me a, a, a ice cream, uh, no, a ice, and the, an ice, and when the, in the end to the, to the, this day, I remember that my mother told me all afternoon, and what, what, what do you think, or uh, what happened with you, you have, because I was uh, around to the August, the August in this year and my mother told me August. all year this this bow is here and I don't know oh I don't know why you don't don't saw it but you didn't see that, it huh I don't know why you didn't see it ah I, I know what you didn't see it um and after that I I well, in, in, in all my life, I have to the ticket crew, ticket crew in my in my eyeballs, and for the reason, and for me, it's a funny, a funny tell uh, or oh, contar eso. To tell about that. To talk about that because was was a uh, very exciting because in all my high school, um, I I continue playing soccer. 
and it doesn't matter that my my trash in my in my face um today i don't have problem with my 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 insure only it's so difficult when i try to to paint to to my eyebrow only that all right thank you lorena go ahead Good evening, everybody. Okay, my story is a letter. In the beginning of my university, uh, my friend and I and I were in the car and met while we were talking happily about life. When we saw that next to the car, uh, they uh, were robbing, probando. Stealing. Stealing. Uh, then we saw that uh, the police were coming um, with signal, señales, signal, mm -hmm. signals, uh, signal, uh, two things um, they did uh, not understand us, but the uh, thieves, 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 ladrones. Mm -hmm. The robbers, thieves. Thieves, uh, notice um, began to follow us. Uh, thank you, God. We we were uh, to into in the gas station. Mm -hmm. Only, only that. Uh huh. Eh, es lo que más recuerdo. <laughs> okay. Thank God you got saved in the gas mm -hmm. station. Okay. All right. Thank you guys for sharing. If there is someone pending, we're going to do it on Monday, but I want you to finish the platform. Let me go ahead and share my computer's screen. Once you can see it, just let me know, please. I think it's loading. And what is it? Yeah. Okay. Ready. Yeah. We can see it. Okay. Pair food using sequence adverbs. For example, you'll be able to take a recipe written on a piece of paper and be able to explain it. In order to illustrate this idea, let me play an audio program so that you can see how this topic is used. This is really easy. First, you put a little oil in a pan, then heat the oil. Next, put in the kernels and cover the pan. When the kernels start to pop, shake the pan gently every few seconds. In about a minute, the popping will slowly stop. After that, turn off the heat and pour it into a bowl. Finally, put a little salt on it and enjoy. I love this snack. First, take an avocado and mash it. Next, you chop half a tomato and half an onion and add them to the avocado. After that, you chop a little cilantro and add that in. Then, put in some lemon or lime juice. Finally, add a little salt, pepper, and of course, hot sauce. Mmm, it's great with chips. A friend from New York City taught me how to make this. First, cut it in half, then toast it. After that, let it cool a little and then spread cream cheese on it. It's really good for breakfast, but you can eat it anytime. Now let me get started by explaining what sequence adverbs are. This topic is quite simple. Sequence adverbs are words that will allow you to explain processes to others. In this case, what we want to do is explain food recipes. But you can explain any other process using sequence adverbs. So the sequence adverbs that we will cover in this lesson are first, then, next, after that, Finally, similar to the audio program, 
in this case we can see that there is a recipe so on the top we see the recipe on a sheet of paper right we see three tablespoons peanut butter one banana two slices of bread two tablespoons butter uh, and we want that to be melted and what we want to do is we want to be able to take this recipe and then we want to use sequence adverbs to explain it, right? And so we use the first one first, mix the peanut butter and mashed potato together. Then we use another sequence adverb. We use then, lightly toast the slices of bread. Next, spread the peanut butter and banana mixture on the toast. After that, close the sandwich and put it in a pan with melted butter and finally fry the bread until it's brown on both sides and what we basically did was that we organized our ideas and we explain in this case a food recipe we use sequence adverbs to do this and so as I mentioned we use first we use then we use next we use after that and then we use finally and um, what I would like to point out here is that all of these words are synonyms what this means is they're the same word right they mean exactly the same thing and the reason that we want to use different words is because we don't want to sound too repetitive so for example we don't want to express this food recipe in the following way first mix the peanut butter and banana together then toast the slices of bread then spread the mixture on the toast then put the sandwich in a pan with butter then try the sandwich until it's brown on both sides we don't want to do that so therefore we use different words to explain and what I would like to point out when talking about this topic is that first should always come at the beginning whenever we want to explain some sort of process or we want to give some sort of recipe finally should always come at the very end so that should be your concluding uh, step then next and after that are interchangeable this means that you can uh, start with first mix the peanut butter and banana together next toast the slices of bread after that so they could be interchangeable there's no rule that says that uh, then needs to comes after first you can use those three interchangeably And the last thing that I would like for you to do is to think about your favorite food recipe. And I want you to write down all the ingredients that you're going to need. So for example, we have, in this case, three tablespoons peanut butter, one banana mash, two slices of bread, two tablespoons butter, and we want that to be melted. And then you use uh, those um, sequence adverbs in order to explain your ideas. So for example, we use first, we use then, we use next, we use after that, and we use finally. So I would like for you to do something similar, but explaining your favorite food recipe. Okay, guys, uh, let's complete the last exercise related to uh, the unit number four on the platform. So there you had a knowledge check and there you also have five questions or five sentences to complete. Now, uh, let's see, I'm going to select Edgar. Can you please com uh, complete the first one? Which snack does this recipe describe? When the kernels start to pop, shake the pan gentle, every few seconds. Edgar? Guys, can you hear? Yes, yes teacher. Yes, teacher. Okay. Yes. Vicente, complete the sentence and select the best answer. Okay, uh, is the last one, popcorn. Popcorn, okay. Okay, read the number two, Evelyn. What is the last step in making guacamole dip? 
Next al cilantro. What is the yeah. last step? Vicente. Ah, el último. The first one. Ay. Finally, add a little salt, pepper, and hot sauce. Thank you. And let's listen to Lorena, number three. Uh, what's the first step in making a toaster bottle is uh, the second. Uh, the first cut in the house. It what is the house. first step in making a toaster bottle? Okay. Cut it in half. So the second one. Yeah. Okay, number four, please. Uh, let's see. Oscar. Which sequence adverbs are not interchangeable? Interchangeable. Interchangeable. Which sequence interchangeable? adverbs are not interchangeable? Uh, mm -hmm. I think uh, first and finally. Okay, why? Because first comes at the beginning and finally at the end. Yeah, right. Okay, cool. Thank you. Let's see. Already, you got Complete. 50 out of 50. Yes. Okay, cool. Now, let's see. All right, so... We have been practicing the use of uh, the present perfect, correct? So yep. previously we were practicing the yes, no questions. You were asking something and you were answering, yes, I have, no, I haven't. However, uh, it's some, something really important to mention the uh, information questions you use them in order to provide extra information. You are not going to answer just Yes, I have, no, I haven't. You need to provide additional information to the question being asked. So let me go ahead and show you a PowerPoint presentation where you can, where you can see some examples. We have like two or three minutes to study those. As long as it's opened, we'll see it. Well, actually it's taken forever. Uh, let's see. Can you please mention the WH words because we're going to practice them at the beginning of the class on Monday. What are the WH words that you remember? What word can you use for uh, talking about places? Where? 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 Okay, can you please tell me one sentence or you, can you ask one question using where in the present perfect? Where, where, where are you born? No, present perfect. So for example, if I ask you, uh, Oscar, where have you eaten lunch today? Where have, have you eaten lunch? What will, I, you, what will be your answer? I have a, ate Eaten. lunch in, in my house. Okay, thank you. So when do we use why, Carlos? Why, we use why um, when you need uh, some response to um i don't know the the, the word i i forgot the wow and we need more information all all the wh words are for more information so if no, you are if i ask a question you need to give a response 
but basically we use why to give a reason. A reason, sorry. Uh, a reason okay. why you are doing something. So let's see. Why have you left the car outside your house? If I ask you that question, what would be your answer, Vicente? Why have you because, left the car outside your house? Because my house doesn't have a, a garage. Okay. So I have left my house. I mean, I, I have, have left, left my car outside my house because there is not enough space in the garage. Okay. All right. So when do we use when, Oscar? Uh, when we use uh, when um, if we need to know um, um, some place no no sorry is it if Time. Exactly. Yeah. We use when to ask about time. For example, when have you gone to the USA, Carlos? Sorry, sorry, teacher. I can hear. When when have you gone to the USA? I I gone uh, to the USA the last vacation. The last vacation. Okay. So yeah. we're going to practice those type of sentences on Monday at the beginning of, of the class, just for okay. you to have a an extra knowledge on those expressions because we were studying the use of a present perfect a mixing with the simple past. But we didn't have like enough time enough time in order to practice uh, the WH words in the present perfect. Bye. Si no han cenado, no les quito más de su tiempo. Buen provecho and see you on Thank Monday. You have see you nice Monday. Weekend. Have a nice weekend. Good night. Good night, see everybody. You see you on nice weekend. You too. Enjoy Thank you. Weekend. You too. <laughs> Enjoy the weekend. <laughs>